via telephone, Dr. Stephen A. Goldman, adjunct professor at Shepherd University and MD. Steve, good morning to you, sir. How are you? Good morning. I'm, I'm fine. Always glad to be on. Wonderful to have you. And on uh, May the 8th, which is tomorrow, you'll be featured between noon and 1.30 for another in the Brown Bag Lunch Lecture Series. Uh, can you tell us the subject of this discussion tomorrow? Um, one of my favorite talks, actually, um, and now one of my most in demand. It's called Fit for Duty, the Veteran Reserve Corps and the Civil War and Reconstruction. And it's one of the least known yet one of the most fascinating aspects of not only the Civil War, but um, the Freedmen's Bureau. And it was, uh, it's been called the most unusual fighting force ever in the United States. And what happened was that the Union was starting to get a, a, a drain in manpower. So in 1863, in April 1863, um, the United States put together what was called, and by the way, uh, perhaps the worst name I know in military history, the Invalid Corps. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yes. How would you like to be a member of an Invalid Corps? I would not. Yes. And um, they made two mistakes, and the mistake was certainly not studying the Invalid Corps. The mistake was the name, and then they also put them into their own uniform which, as I'll describe at the lecture, was absolutely beautiful, but looked preposterous. Within a year, they changed the name to the Veteran Reserve Corps, and they also, because um, the, the men refused to wear the uniform, they reverted back to their original uniforms, the ones they'd worn in the Army. And it was just a remarkable unit. Over 60,000 men stayed in the service with the Union, within the Veteran Reserve Corps, and um, including, as I'll describe, um, fighting in the Battle of Fort Stevens, which was the battle that saved Washington after the critical battle at Monocacy, which delayed Jubal early long enough for uh, the, remnant, the, the rest of the Sixth Corps to arrive in Washington and to help defend Washington along with the Veteran Reserve Corps. What nobody anticipated and as you know, with history, there's always un unintended consequences. This was one of the finest unintended consequences of the Reconstruction era, that the Veteran Reserve Corps, including members of the Left Arm Corps, about, as you know about whom I write, would be personnel in the Freedmen's Bureau. And they became some of the finest officers in the Freedmen's Bureau. As a matter of fact, the last... Um, lifelong learning brown bag lunch that I did, which we discussed on, on your show, um, was um, Joseph Wilder Galray, who even though was not in the was in the left arm corps, was not in the Veteran Reserve Corps, but he was in one of the four units in the regular army that was designed for men who were severely wounded. That was the equivalent of the Veteran Reserve Corps. So it, it's quite a story. And again, most people have never even heard of it. Steve, because of time constraints, we only have about four minutes left, so I want to get a couple of questions in here real quick. I'm going to start with Matt Miller. Matt, go right ahead. Uh, tell us more about these 60,000 men and their, their becoming a part of this Veteran Reserve Corps. Was that a voluntary thing that they said they wanted to be a part of? Uh, yes and no. Um, there was a stipulation that they were not to be discharged from hospitals if they were capable of being within the Veteran Reserve Corps. So they were transferred to the Veteran Reserve Corps. In addition, there were men who volunteered for the Veteran Reserve Corps. So you can go into it one of two ways. Um, it was unanticipated how many men would volunteer for it. And again, uh, tomorrow, which and again, you, 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 know, you and, and others are certainly welcome to attend tomorrow, and it will be Zoom. So um, you can go to um, the Lifelong Learning um, part of the website for Shepherd University and find out how you can register for the, for the Zoom meeting or come to the meeting. Um, th there were two ways of getting into that, as I said, but nobody anticipated the, the tens of thousands of men who would stay in the service, um, including the fact that they did not want to be discharged. They felt that strongly about their military service. So it's, it's a remarkable story. It really is. John? 
Good morning, Steve. Uh, when the Invalid Corps was first formed, was it intended to be sort of a stopgap uh, administrative position, or was it originally seen to be some, a combatant group? That's a great question. Um, you had to be healthy enough. I mean, it, as, I, as I mentioned, there were two battalions, one who you could where you could march. I mean, it was really intended for men who were amputees. It was not intended to be frontline troops, even though these men had all been frontline troops. It was to um, be garrison duty, guarding prisoners, uh, be available in exigent circumstances, which is exactly what happened at Fort Stevens. They were not replacing men in the field. They were bolstering the men in the field by being available to replace able-bodied men who could now be deployed to the field. So that's a great question, and I will explain how um, there were times where they actually did fight, and Fort Stevens is one of the great examples of that. Well, even, you know, I think of the left arm corps, whatever it was called, the, the process of loading and firing those those muskets at the time was kind of a two-handed operation.